Hey guys, me and team here, and welcome to Let's Play Civilization V. That's right, viewers, it's time. And, uh, wow, this game is just chock full of completely new uh, gameplay changes and everything. Um, one of the reasons it took me a while to bring this to you is that this game is also a little bit bug-ridden, similar to previous releases in the franchise. You can have situations where you can get a, uh, a bug that basically will prevent you from continuing the game. In one of my previous games, I had a peace treaty that was supposed to last for 10 turns, last indefinitely, and blocked my intended victory condition. So, uh, I'm just going to set up a standard game, and I would like to showcase something that's uh, really effective in this game, which is early warfare, and I'm going to pick Washington of America, uh, you have plus one sight and a tiled purchase discount that I don't really make use of a whole lot. And Minutemen's a little bit better as a unique. B-17 is very late in the game, so similar to previous uh, games, the later uniques aren't going to be as good, just because you don't see them as often. Uh, other other uh, leaders are probably better for this strategy, which is why I'm using Washington. Uh, Montezuma, for example, culture from war, while well, we're going to be fighting a lot. So, that's something. Sun never sets. That would also be similarly bad early on, although the longbows are ridiculous in this game with their extra range. Napoleon's also good for early game. Bismarck, Alexander is. Um, the increased movement speed of these guys is uh, impressive. And uh, even the likes of Catherine, which gets to build extra units, or uh, <laughs> the Songhai, which is just uh, incredible. With the extra gold bonus, you could use the rush buy units out. All good, all good calls. But I'm not doing that this game. We're gonna do some very cookie cutter standard stuff. On uh, yeah, we'll do a continent standard game speed, all that jazz. of war that nearly and especially if you play enough if you play the same civ all the time I'm sure it can get old new user interface we'll see some differences from civ 4 I'll just like it before you can use the mouse wheel to scroll up and down you have uh, green dots equaling food orange dots with a hammer in that representing your hammers and uh, commerce slash gold it's really more accurately described as gold in this game the, the whole commerce concept from so far is gone so uh, adjust as you can mm. yeah it's not a great starting city site so it's okay you need a couple calendar resources it's much easier to get calendar in this game than other games but uh yeah, we'll choose production. First thing you want, worker. Make the tile improvements around your city. Make your city more effective sooner for a rush like this, like I'm intending to do. And uh, you have two early game uh, unit construction options that are really potent. The uh, first one is horsemen uh, here at horseback riding. 12 strength, move 4 movement points. Uh, a lot of cities in this game will quickly get well into the double digits of strength. Uh, some of the city-states could be as strong as 20. So you can't really get away with using the weaker spears or you know the six-strength warriors or trying to pelt them with six-strength, uh, range-strength archers. Uh, you'll take a lot of attrition that way. Um, you, so you pretty much wind up using either horsemen, which are faster, but have weakness to spearmen, which are common units, or uh, swordsmen, which take a little longer to reach and require a resource that's a little bit harder to hook up quickly, but they're still very effective. And uh, another thing that was changed in this game. Oh yeah, I've auto and turn on. Great. A uh, couple you can unlock right away, such as tradition, liberty, and honor. Some you need to be uh, certain eras before you can do anything with them. Uh, frankly, this replaces the civics. Uh, every time you get to a new culture threshold, which uh, increases pretty quickly as as you gain uh, levels in it. But anyway, uh, you can get uh, you can first unlock a policy line and then start unlocking policies. 
uh, honors your early game military. It gives you uh, first a bonus against barbarians, then access to a great general, and uh, really some bonuses for you know, adjacent military units. And then finally you get down into stuff like military cast, which uh, helps you out with happiness. Uh, Liberty is more your peaceful expansion route when you're expanding a lot because you get a lot of per city bonuses. Newly founded cities have more food, they produce more, they, uh, yeah, you cheaper workers and culture per city and happiness for each city atta attached to the capital. Happiness is important in this game. For uh, every surplus happiness, you get progress towards a golden age, which is uh, very significant in this game where production limitations are much higher than in previous games. And, uh, yeah. But also, uh, if you get too unhappy, it slows down your production. And if you get really unhappy, it makes your military fight more poorly. So you gotta keep an eye on happiness. So, this military cast and meritocracy early on are possible options to support a lot of cities early. Tradition is more of a uh, boost for capital. It has food bonuses for capital, percentage food bonuses for capital, uh, wonder bonuses, and what have you. And then later on, you get into other things as well. But for this game, I will be uh, showing you guys how to abuse the honor path, which I don't see a lot of on the forums for whatever reason. Some people talk about it, but wow, I mean, it's just amazing what early honor can do. So I'm going to uh, get a little bit of exploration around here going on. Also new to the game are city-states. I haven't met one yet. Oh, I must have. Yeah, my guy found a source of culture, so I get to adopt a policy now. And like I said, I'll take honor. The first step in honor just gives you a 25% combat bonus with barbarians, which is nice, and lets you know when barbarian encampments are nearby, so you can get some gold. Napoleon of France. Okay, so I met another Civ first, and he's like down here. All right. Yeah, notice the hexes. I like the hexes. It's one of the good changes in this game. No more of this cheap diagonal movement to. Uh, Save yourself movement points, essentially. And Solomon, in my opinion, the weakest leader in the game, but who knows? It's so early on, he might prove to be stronger than people think, especially on certain maps. We'll find out. Yeah, Manifest Destiny, a little bit underrated, just because you get more ruins early in the game, and you have some tactical advantages in terms of your military. Um, oh yeah, this is science, which is based on your population, and then multipliers in cities, and then uh, just gold. There's no more slider. These things are all independent. Also, uh, buildings once again cost maintenance, so be careful with your buildings. Same thing with units. They cost maintenance as well. Do I have a source of horse nearby? I do. Okay. So that's very good. That means I can go straight for horseback riding and not have my plants disrupted. Absolutely. Um, after the worker, I'll probably want to get a, uh, monument. Maybe. Yeah, because I want the, uh, I want the culture. I want to pick up both the great general and the 15% bonus as soon as I can. And then I'll want a military unit to, uh, protect my capital. And finally, a, uh, another one to support the expansion for the horse. You don't actually need roads to hook up. Yeah, here's, you don't need roads to hook up resources anymore either. They just have to be in your borders. Apparently these barbs got into a fight with me. Okay. Decisive victory. Also new to Civ 5. Man, I'm going to be saying that a lot. You have uh, partial battles. and Battles are not instantly decided any longer. You can have outcomes where you know, each side gets damaged. You won't have an in a complete kill if with full health units unless there's a huge difference in strength. Which can be acquired. Okay, so I was I had my guys upgraded to a spearman. Okay, that's fine. I'll probably want to heal up now. Just press H for that. Most of the hotkeys are still intact. I for irrigation, P for pasture. Um, it's N for mines now, which is a little awkward at first. But you can get used to that sort of thing. Also, cities will uh, gain culture over time, and you can buy tiles if you want, although I usually don't bother because it's expensive, and I have other uses I prefer for my uh, monies. I don't have mining yet, so I can't build mines, so I guess I'll just go with a uh, farm. 
yeah, like I said, I'll go to the monument here. I think once I hit pop three, it's going to be time to start emphasizing the hammers. So, citizen automation, production focus. Very good. Also, I'll just go ahead and irrigate. Nice. Picked up another tile. And yeah, you will over time with just culture pick up some tiles. But it's not as pronounced as if you buy tiles. Aztec! Oh man, gotta love money. Although, uh, with the changes in the game, he, he's not Civ IV's Mon, he's a little less brutal. So, okay, I'm a decent ways to horseback riding. I'll probably want... Uh, they got a barb encampment there. Actually, if I just settle near the river, I'll probably be okay. Okay, here we go. Finally, a city-state. These things don't have an impact on uh, winning or... Well, they have an impact, but they can't win or lose themselves. They're just... They play sort of like civs. In that they... Uh, they can make units and, you know, attack and defend. But really, they're, they're just... Uh, things you can take advantage of. Either by capturing them or by giving them money so that they give you rewards. Or doing other things that make them like you. Once they like you a certain amount, they will start giving you either uh, gold, culture, or food. I'm not sure on the gold, but they will give you either culture or food, depending. And, uh, no, I don't think they give you gold. It's just culture, food. I forget what the third one is. But they can also be milked as war allies or whatever. You know, I'm going to put up a warrior here before I get a settler going. And notice now that I have the monuments... I get more policies more quickly with the extra culture. And like I said, my goal is to pick up a, a great general and the ability for adjacent military. Those two things combined allows for some really early abuses with the uh, strategic resource units, which is just the way I like it. Also, since uh, research is a factor of population, growing cities is even more important now than ever. Soul. And they give me money. Excellent. I like money. Okay, adopt the policy. I'm going to play it a little safe and take discipline first. I don't need a great general right away, and I don't have to protect them that way. Probably the biggest change in this game I have not mentioned yet is one unit per tile. That's right. You only get one military unit per tile, so you have to plan carefully uh, when you're fighting. Also, cities get a passive arrow shot, which you'll see in future ver uh, future videos here. So you can actually run into some trouble that way. And yeah, if you fortify the city, you increase the strength somewhat. But that also ha can help out later with uh, you know attacking units that get too close. Barbs can be a little bit of an issue on Emperor. They're not, they're not going to blow you out or anything. Try to decide the best place to settle. I do want the horses. The distance maintenance isn't there anymore. And really your main uh, thing to stop you from expansion is happiness. Happiness is what hurts you the most. And you can mitigate that with luxury resources and... Um, well... Luxury resources and buildings for the most part, and to an extent your social policies. So, you have to be careful how quickly you expand versus not. But if you go early conquest, you have another option, which is puppet governments, or these city-state messages. Yeah, the city-states will request you to do things that will also increase your influence with them and make them like you. All right, I'm already up to horseback riding, so let's choose our next technology. Now, I probably want to go for production. Um, yeah, we'll go for production. And then I want calendar. I'm not going to be happy limited in the near future, so that's okay. But I'm coming up on the time limit for uh, YouTube here, so I'm going to cut this video off here and continue in the next time on uh, Let's Play Civilization V. Let's see how many times I can say that correctly. The me and team, signing off.